Hi, Deborah Callahan here. I hope this particular video finds you exactly when you're meant to hear it. And that something that you hear today will help you or someone that you know. So before we begin, I invite you to suspend what you think you know about death and grief just for a moment and open your mind to other possibilities. Today, I'll be speaking with Katie Sutton, intuitive channel and founder of Zen Within Academy and the upcoming Soul Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. Katie spent many years working in the corporate banking world prior to doing the work that she does now, which includes mostly um, energetic healing and trauma release. So welcome, Katie. So good to see you. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for being, thank you for having me here. <laughs> so I'm going to jump right in and ask, um, how do you, Katie, um, encourage people to let go of the idea of what grief should look and feel like? Hmm. Well, a little bit of background on, on my story with grief and my understanding of it. So you mentioned that I'm um, an intuitive channel and an energetic healer. And at my core, I'm an empath, which means that when people are moving through emotion um, or experience in their life, I have a feeling um, of that in my body. And so when I work with people who are in grief, I often feel it as this heavy, dense weight. And the kind of tongue in cheek way that I try to describe it is that when I feel grief in somebody's field, energetic field or within their experience as an empath, it's almost like those big, heavy fire blankets that um, they put on people to put out the fire. Mm. And they weigh a lot, right? And so grief energetically, to me, feels like this heavy weight. And, you know, I always like to share with people that grief is not just about death and dying and losing a loved one or losing a friend or a partner. Grief is also about all of the endings that we go through in our life. And so many of us will be experiencing grief and not know that we're experiencing grief because we only associate it with the loss of a loved one. But when we let go of a job, when we let go of a partner, right, when we um, end a friendship or begin a, um, a new identity for ourselves or a new way of being, there is grief that comes up. And, and, and I like to think of grief as this beautiful honoring of things that are coming to a close. And so oftentimes when I'm working with people, they come to me and they are, are it's almost in suspended animation because the weight of the grief is so heavy and dense for them. And my intention when they come to work with me is, is not to discount that grief or to tell them to move faster through it or to change the way that they're moving through their grief process, but is really to hold space and to create an open container for them to be able to talk about their grief and talk about their feelings and get into it in a way that is is productive and and what happens as i watch that energy shift in their field is that i start to see their light return to them and and i will often say that the energetics of grief as i experience it as an empath and as a healer it tends to dim our light and and i'm sure for many of your listeners um, and watchers they have been through the grief process in some way and it, it kind of has this way of opening our heart and and really helping us to reprioritize what is important in our life right it it brings about a major shift in consciousness and and my belief about the current experience that we're having here on this planet with um, the immense amount of loss of life that we're going through with some of the things the current events that are happening right now is um, that that it's here to open our hearts because we are shifting as a collective into a higher state of consciousness. And as we move through the grief process as individuals, as we lose a loved one, as something that we have anchored into as a form of safety, like a job, comes to a close and we grieve that, it serves to open our heart to a brand new beginning and a new frequency that we're starting to anchor here on this planet. And I hope that on the other side of grief, that people will find a new lease on life, that they will find a new meaning to their life, a new purpose to their life. And so that's how I look at grief. And certainly there are many things that we can grieve and there's there's many processes that we can go through to experience grief, but that's how I look at the energetics of it. Mm, wonderful. 
So what happens if someone is in total denial of their grief or they mm -hmm. don't know what they're experiencing? Maybe they're feeling anger or discord somewhere and they don't quite know what it is. Sure. How does that show up energetically for them when they're in complete denial? Yeah, well, it can show up in a lot of different ways. And so because I have kind of trained myself to be able to feel into that vibration and, and put a name to that emotion, mm -hmm. you know, we have a really hard time on this planet naming our emotions. They kind of go into this cosmic blender and we can't really figure out what we're feeling sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure you've had that experience yes. as I have, right? And so um, when when I feel it energetically and I can, can kind of tap into that frequency and feel it in my field uh, through the other person's experience, what I often find is that that grief might be manifesting on a physical level for them. So uh, especially for women, um, what I have witnessed, um, and I'm not sure why this is so true for women, but this is what I've witnessed in my practice and working with clients. Um, it tends to make us really exhausted. Mm. And, you know, a lot of times I will see that women are holding grief in their in their reproductive area. And that happens to be where we store a lot of emotions. And um, that's also where a lot of our vitality comes from the juiciness of life comes from. And so if we're holding that grief in our bodies there, it kind of depletes and dims our light to the point where we kind of walk around and we feel really disconnected, really tired, really um, unenthused mm -hmm. about life and life experience and so that's why I, I remind people that grief isn't just about losing someone right you can be carrying grief because a partnership came to an end or a friendship came to an end and that can be depleting your energy field and so when people come in to me you know they say oh, gosh I'm so tired or I'm really um, I'm really angry and I have a lot of pain in my body because anger often comes into the body as pain as physical pain mm. um, I will say to them okay well let's talk about you know, why might you be feeling sad or why might you be feeling grief? And, and they may be a little bit in denial about it, but lo and behold, when I ask certain questions, they start to say, well, you know, I, I had to let go of my job and my dog died and, and my, my, my grandfather passed away. Like they might go down this long list and all of a sudden they're like, holy cow, mm. there's a lot of things that have happened in my life that I'm grieving and I haven't sat down to actually feel it. Um, so, so that's how it often manifests from a physical standpoint. And then kind of on a relationship standpoint, what I often see is that we, we kind of go into what I call hermit or turtle mode and we pull back and we disengage from our connections. And, you know, grief, it, it has this interesting way when it's in our field and it's not being processed of muting everything. So it mutes the amount of joy that we can experience. It mutes the, um, you know, the amount of vitality that we have. It mutes the, our desire to be connected with other people. And, and that's only if we're not processing it, right? But if grief is being processed and looked at and, and, and felt into, it actually can heighten all of those experiences. It can, can connect us more into the threads of life that are existing around us. And so if, if we find somebody in our life who has pulled back and we don't know why, oftentimes we make that about ourselves. And I always encourage people to not make it about them, right? To really say, maybe they're moving through something. Maybe they're grieving something. Maybe they've let go of something and, and they're having a hard time coming out of that. And to just hold them in love and to continue to show up for them when they ask and to continue to remind them that you're there for them if, if, uh, if, you know, if they need you. Perfect. That's perfect. And so true. Now, okay, so I'm going to like switch gears a little bit here mm -hmm. and talk about all the loss of life that's been happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're so highly connected, but, and I know that about you, but um, how can we know that it's possible to connect with the people that we've lost? Sure, sure. And I always like to put out the disclaimer that I am not a medium. So a medium is a person that connects with people on the other side, and that's their primary, you know, goal in session with clients. 
I'm kind of um, a reluctant connector with the other side. Sometimes I remember I used to say a lot, a lot of times, like I, I don't connect with those that have passed on because there was a little bit of fear about doing that work because it's very intense work. But what often happens now for me is that um, when when somebody comes in and they've lost someone, if it's important for them to connect with that loved one, that loved one will come through, right? Just like any other guide that I channel. And generally the messages are there about forgiveness and letting go, right? So when we're holding on to the grief, sometimes we we hold on to the grief because we want to be connected to those on the other side. Mm -hmm. And we think that if we don't if we if we don't let go of the grief, then our our ability to keep them in our hearts is going to continue to be there. But what I find is that when we hold on to the grief and we don't move through the grief process, it actually creates this very distinct barrier between us and those who have passed on. And it's it's kind of like a radio channel frequency. That's how I describe it. So think of those that have passed on it as being in a higher frequency in a different radio station. And when we're holding on to the grief, our vibration is lower. We're lower on that frequency scale. And they have a really hard time shifting their vibration lower because they're not in a body to speak with us. And so when that grief is in our field, it mutes our vibration. And then we have a hard time having dreams with them, right? Because a lot of people are like, I really want to dream with my loved one. I want to reconnect with them. And so what I always say to them is, okay, but you have to let go of the grief. And if there's hesitation in letting go of that grief, I always give them this explanation of, well, when it's here, it's like this shield, right? This buffer that's keeping you from being able to connect with the true essence of who they are. And certainly when we move through the grief process, we don't lose the memories of them. We don't lose the connection. We actually heighten those things and we start to experience them in a different way. I have so many clients who tell me that their relationship with their parents who have passed on is actually better than the relationship that they had here on earth, right? And that I think is a beautiful gift and something that, that we can all claim if we're willing to move through the grief process. And so it may be um, a, a place where you want to ask for a sign from someone who's passed on, right? So I have a lot of clients who say to me, you know, there's a cardinal that comes to my window and I know that that's my father, right? They, they have this, this true knowing, intuitive knowing within them of what those signs are. And so I always encourage people to anchor into that. And if there is a symbol or something that uh, represents a loved one who's passed on, to ask them to start to bring that symbol in, but then to let go of the attachment to how that shows up. Because sometimes we get so attached to what that's going to look like or what that experience is going to be that we actually push that experience away and we miss the signs and synchronicities. And this is no different than when I teach people how to connect with their guides, right? It's actually very similar because I consider our loved ones that have passed on as guides to us in our physical journey. And so the more that you can move through the grief process, the more that you can let go of any emotions that maybe you're holding on to just to stay connected to them, the easier the process of connection will be. And sometimes that will come in signs and symbols in your waking life. Songs are a great way to connect to our loved ones. Music is so evocative of memories, but also in the dream space as well. Beautiful. So what comfort can you bring at this time to people who have lost um, people suddenly and tragically or lost multiple mm. people during this time. Yeah, yeah. You know, we are moving through a series of what I call exit portals right now. And um, that's just my way of articulating what I'm seeing happening on the energetic plane, where there are an immense amount of souls who are not ready or not able to move through the transition that we're going through on this planet. I think it's pretty obvious to everybody that we are moving through something here on this planet, right? This, these experiences that we've had over the last couple of years are kind of like a collective trauma that we've all moved through. And when there is a collective trauma, there's always a shift, right? There's always a change in the way that we show up in the way that our world works in the systems that are here and the structures that are here on this planet. That is the collective change that we are experiencing right now. 
And as I've connected with those who have crossed over and talked with my guides, the message that I keep hearing is that there are people that want to be a part of this transition that we're going through, this great awakening, right, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. But the circumstances that they have in their life will not allow them to experience it. And so I'm talking about people who are perhaps addicted and die of an overdose, right? People who are in chronic disease and, and in a lot of pain in their body and a lot of discomfort in their body. People who are suffering from deep depression and, and really are having a hard time being here on this planet. The way that my guides have explained it to me is that they have um, kind of come to the edge of the vibration that they can shift to in this incarnation. And sometimes it's easier for them to make an exit, leave their body, and go back to source and then return again in a different life circumstance to move through this transition. Mm. And, you know, it used to be when I would work with people who had loved ones who had crossed over that I would connect with them and I would be like, yeah, it's going to be a long time before they choose to come back. And I see this with animals as well. They're choosing to come back faster and faster because they're, you know, you have to understand that what we're moving through on this planet is, is, is the best and, you know, most important classroom in the universe. Okay, like it may not feel like that when you're going through the difficult times, but this is a really good place to be, right? This is a really great place to be for a soul who wants to learn and wants to grow and wants to experience a lot of change, which is what many of us are here for. But if your life circumstance is so difficult that you can't get out of it and you can't see any way out of it and you feel lost and you feel hopeless, sometimes the easiest way for them to choose to be here is to choose not to be here. And so that's why I believe that some souls are, are shifting out of this experience so quickly. But I have so many people that are like, he was here one day and gone the next. Right. And and I believe that's because we are we're in this time where there's there's a lot of opportunity to make an exit so that some people can come right back or not at all. And and I actually think that that's quite beautiful, really, because to be liberated from a place of suffering, return to source, God, creation, whatever you want to call it, and then to decide to come back in a circumstance that's more expanded that's more joyful, that's more hopeful. What a beautiful soul contract. What a beautiful way to live, right? And to choose to live. And, you know, these souls that are coming back, by the way, they're being born to parents who are much more open-minded, who are much more in a place of accepting that these children that are being born don't want to turn their gifts off and they want to stay connected to their intuition and to, you know, the imaginal realms. And, and so these souls that are choosing to leave and come right back are, some of them are choosing some amazing circumstances to come into. I have so many clients who are, you know, giving birth right now and bringing in new children. And I'm watching these little beings that are choosing to reincarnate be, um, be so excited to be here. Like they want to be a part of this transition and they want to help us to move back into the light, right, of being able to shift together in unity consciousness is my belief from the heart space. And so, you know, it, this is a hard thing to hear for some people, though, because you know, a lot of times we just want them to be with us. We don't want to lose someone. We don't understand why they're gone too soon. And, and so sometimes we have to kind of take that viewpoint out of the equation and, and kind of zoom out a little bit and see why that soul might have wanted to make an exit and why they might want to come back and, and have a little bit of trust and faith that, that they knew exactly what they were doing when they sign that soul contract to make an exit at this very important time. And, you know, the last thing that I'll say about that, Debbie, is that, um, you know, there's a lot of souls who are taking a lot of dense energy with them, right? And they are of service when they leave this planet. 
every animal that I connect with that is is passing on is taking density with them right they're they're helping us to let go of some of the hurt and some of the pain and some of the struggle energy that we have had on this planet for so long and so I always try to remind people of that as well because their loved one may be clearing energy for them for their entire ancestral line they may be closing out a pattern or a chapter in their passing and and what a beautiful gift and what a way to look at somebody's passing is they're bringing something to an end for the entire family that's also a beautiful way to look at it in my opinion absolutely that's amazing amazing yeah. and so much love there right mm -hmm. like just mm -hmm. so much love yeah okay so is there anything else that you um would want to say to people as we're, um, we just continue to move through this really strange time, even for those of us who haven't lost a loved one, we're still experiencing grief. How, yes. how would you encourage people to, to continue to move through that? Yes, yeah. You know, there is no recipe, in my opinion, for grief. I know there's a lot of writings about the five stages or the six stages, right? And, and all of that is valid, and I think those are great you know, points to look at on your journey. But the number one thing that I see that is holding people back from being able to move through their experiences on this planet right now is that we are not choosing to feel our emotions. Mm. And, you know, it can be incredibly uncomfortable to feel. I have so many people that show up to me holding anxiety in their heart and when I dig into the anxiety that they're experiencing, what has happened is that they've actually walled off their heart so that they don't have to feel the grief and they don't have to feel the sadness and they don't have to feel the anger. We are all grieving collectively right now, not just for the people that have been lost, but for the world as it has existed and the fact that we're not going back to that normal right? We can keep trying, but I think we've all witnessed in the last couple of years that we're not going back. Mm -hmm. And so it's natural to grieve that. I mean, I have moments where this grief is so palpable for me because I look at all of the things that I was doing before this last two year experience. And, and certainly my life is full and there's wonderful things now, but I miss things. Mm -hmm. I miss the ease and kind of the naivete that we had. And, and so what I always encourage people to do is to make space to feel that, you know, and if it's okay, Debbie, I'd love to take people through just a little bit of a practice here just to, to drop sure. into that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just do this together. So if you're listening to this or watching this and you're not driving or operating machinery, please close your eyes and place a hand on your heart space. And I'm just going to ask that you drop into a connection with your heart. And we're going to do that through the breath first. And so as you breathe in, I want you to imagine that you are breathing light in through the nostrils down into the heart space. And as you breathe out, you are drawing forward any sadness, any grief, any energy of density that may be present in the heart. And you're exhaling that out through the mouth. And every time you breathe in, we're drawing more light in, not to snuff out this grief or sadness, but to bring awareness to it. So think of the light as it passes into your heart space as bringing in awareness, consciousness to what you're feeling. And you may have some emotion come up. You may have some tears that want to come up. And you may not. You may just feel some tightness in your chest. Whatever your experience is, is perfect. And so as you continue to breathe into this and you continue to breathe out what isn't serving, maybe the breath gets deeper. Maybe there is a sigh. Maybe there is an audible exhale that needs to come to let go of some of the heaviness that you're holding on your heart. And maybe, just maybe, some of that heaviness that you're carrying is on behalf of the collective, of the human collective, or on behalf of a loved one in your life who's lost someone. We don't realize often how much we are caring for those around us. And so that's another important part of this, that sometimes we need to drop in and just feel the load that we're carrying and choose to unburden it. And so I often like to imagine that I'm carrying this big pack of energy on my back, which is this burden of all of the grief 
that I am witnessing around me, all of the suffering that I'm witnessing around me. And when I choose to let go of that, when I choose to put that down, I imagine that Mother Earth comes and transmutes that for me, comes and takes that energy so that I don't have to walk around with that burden. Because if I'm carrying that burden, then it's hard for me to keep my heart open. And so when somebody's sitting across from me and they're hurting, it can be hard for me to be in compassion if I'm carrying that burden around. And so with every exhale, I just encourage you to let go of something that you're carrying. And this does not mean that you're in denial of what's happening on this planet or what's happening in your own life, but you don't have to carry it in your body. You don't have to carry it around with you all the time in order to grieve. You know, I always find it interesting that we walk around in dark black clothing when we're grieving as a way to let everybody know what's happening for us. But people don't know how to speak to us when we're grieving. They don't know what to say. And so maybe you're also carrying this feeling of being othered right now if you're grieving, of not knowing who you are in this moment. And so I also invite you to just feel into that if that is present for you. And know that there is so much unconditional love available to you from source, from the earth, from those around you at all times. And just draw that light into your heart if you can in this moment knowing that you're supported in this process and that it is happening in divine and perfect timing exactly as it's meant to be. There's nothing that needs to happen faster. There's nothing that you're doing wrong. And so also breathe in the light of forgiveness for yourself of whatever is occurring for you as you move through this grief process, as we all move through this collective grief process that we are moving through as a collective now. Good. And just deepen that breath further. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And so I guess my number one piece of advice, Debbie, is to just feel. Um, my belief on this planet is that the shifts that we're going through and the changes that are happening, that if we could all just choose to feel a little bit more and feel in our vulnerability a little bit more and express our feelings a bit more, that that we might come out of this um, in a much more useful way, right, and a less challenging way. And there's so many ways for us to get busy and not feel. And so this is, this is a practice, right? This is a setting aside time every day to drop into feeling and to journal or to make art or to go for a walk or to just be with ourselves in this really intentionful place. And it doesn't have to be a long time. That was maybe three or four minutes as I was guiding us through that of just feeling. Yeah, that was such a beautiful um, practice healing. <laughs> so, yes, felt, all of the above. I, I felt, you know, it was amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. So thank you. And, sure. All right. So, so for my last question, what mm -hmm. personally gives you the greatest hope at this time? Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's a beautiful question. I, I think that when I'm not in my own way, right, because we all get in our own way and we all go into our story sometimes, when I'm pulled out of that and I really look around at all of the changes that are happening, I, I know that it's really easy to get caught up in the division and the difficulty that's happening, but it's really difficult for me to not see all of the good that's occurring. Mm. There are so many conversations that are happening. There are so many people that are leaving jobs and things that are not in alignment with them. There are so many things that are shifting that would never have shifted if we had not been through this collective trauma over the last couple of years. And so when I zoom out and I look at the totality of the change that's occurring, I can't help but see where we're headed. And this is what I call the new earth, right? And this is what, when I'm, I'm creating my soul expo here in Charlotte, what we're going to be focused on is just helping people to see all of the ways and all of the changes and all of the new things that are being birthed right now. I have more people that I'm supporting that are creating businesses, that are doing healing work, that are creating and being in their artistic expression than I ever have seen. People are being liberated every day from places where they felt stuck. Like this has changed so much. And so even though we're losing loved ones, even though there's a lot of loss, even though there's a lot of things that are not going to return, I feel so excited about all of the space that we're making 
so that Absolutely. newness can anchor and new creations can come. And I just witness it every day and I get the pleasure of supporting, you know, so many people in their transformation and watching this process happen for them and, and helping them to move through the emotions. And that gives me hope because people ultimately, I believe, are good and have a beautiful heart and are here to do really good things. But so many people have been hurting for so long and that hurt has come to the surface and we are healing, right? It may be hard, it may be difficult, it may be challenging to witness, but we are healing. Mm, beautiful, thank you so yeah. much. Yes, of course. Okay, so Katie and I would love to hear your thoughts. So please feel free to leave a comment or reach out to either one of us. I'll put all of our contact information below the video. And if you found this interesting at all, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. There should be a little gray box somewhere in the frame here that you can press and subscribe. Thank you so much, Katie. And um, thank you everyone for listening. Take care. Yeah. Thank you all.